Hi, I'm Barry from Flooring Africa and welcome to another case study video where we get into the good, the bad and the indifferent about flooring installations and what you need to safeguard your company or your investment against or what you need to chase because there's good installers out there and then there are the uninformed or the bad installers out there. Unfortunately today, I've just come back from a site inspection here in the Western Cape, South Africa where a floor has been totally destroyed through a uh, long-term retail company who have been in the industry for over a decade. And unfortunately, their installation crew who did this particular installation just got it totally wrong. And ultimately, what started as a 50,000 50, investment is now going to require at least 150,000 for remedial. Um, we're going to get into the detail and this is why you need to invest in your installation crews, your understanding of the science and why as a consumer you need to properly vet who is doing your installation and make sure that they're doing it right. If something looks off, ask questions because this is what could go wrong. All right, we've made it inside. Obviously, you can see that this is a beautiful middle to upper marker home, which has just gone through a recent renovation. Now, the existing substrate is a solid suspended timber floor, which has a crawl space there under of approximately half a meter. In these kind of situations, the installer, the retailer, and the homeowner have to be very careful that you don't compromise the microclimate that is happening below the floor which is going to impact the living space and all the new layers and the existing layer of floor there above. So walking into this home, one of the immediate symptoms that I'm identifying that is shouting out that something is wrong is that the floor is uneven underfoot. While the SPC planks are looking all nice and even, when I'm walking over them, there is actually, the planks are elevated, almost like pillowing, and I can feel as if there's almost something rigid or uneven underneath and this is giving me an indication that there is some pressure build up the floors are being elevated but what layer is being elevated is it the SPC or is it actually the supporting substructure there under other elements that I'm also noticing pretty much all over the place is that the SPC because there is that little bit of elevated movement a lot of the locking mechanism is breaking so you're seeing the breakout along the edges of the planks this is a telltale sign that the planks are moving vertically, which they're not designed to do, and they're gonna start failing. Another bugbear of mine, which we've uh, tackled in previous videos, is where people have installed planks and they have created a, or they haven't been paying attention to the actual pattern of the planks, the stagger on how you are marrying up the short ends of the planks, having a random pattern, or are you just don't care and you're actually allowing the pattern to form an H pattern or a staircase, or maybe the short ends are just too close together. This floor is shouting out left, right, and center that whoever installed this floor just wasn't paying attention to the layout of the planks. I can note some other symptoms that I'm also identifying just while I'm standing here, is that the installer has tried to allow for a little bit of expansion movement, which is absolutely critical for most flooring types, but they've gone and they've used a white mastic in and around, these are steel door frames, and they've left a channel all the way around them, and they filled them up with mastic. It looks highly unsightly, and I've got a feeling that they have used no soft cavity filler, and it's just solid silicone all the way, which basically makes your expansion gap totally moot. It doesn't work. That silicone is not going to flex, it's not going to want to move with the floor, and it's going to lock this floor down in no uncertain terms. I've also identified that there is almost like a clear silicone that has been wiped along the bottom of the skirting. So as soon as we start trying to tackle if there is a little bit of an uneven shadow gap underneath the skirting and starting to put silicones or mastics or whatever, whatever gap filler into these gaps, that is also going to lock down the floor. So between the bottom of the skirting and the top surface of the floor, if we shove adhesive in there, it's going to lock the two elements together and then when that floor wants to expand and contract, it can't do so because now it's locked down by 
5, 10, 15 linear meters of glued down skirting. Let's get a little bit of a close up. Here we can see the silicone where they've obviously gone and tried to leave it a bit of an expansion gap and they have filled it up with a white silicone. Unfortunately, that is totally rigid and there is no uh, allowance for these planks to be able to go in and compress this. Also, it looks very unsightly. This is a perfect case of where we would want to undercut the door frame, even a steel door frame, which is not that difficult. Here, we've locked down the floor for sure. So here we've got the situation that I was talking about with regards to silicone detailing along the bottom of the skirting. Now I can understand if you've got some uh, shadow gapping that you're trying to do away with. The best way to avoid this is to actually have a screeded pre-prepared substrate, but I understand sometimes it's not in the budget. But what you need to do here is you need to make sure that you're not locking the skirting to the top surface of your floating floor. Because if you've got a whole lot of meters, running meters of this bonded detailing, it totally impedes the movement of the floor and you have just compromised your entire installation just for a little bit of an aesthetic prep work that you weren't prepared to get involved in. So here we can see where there is a breakout of the click system. This is because the planks are having, uh, having to engage with a little bit of vertical movement. Now this vertical movement can be uh, attributed to either that the planks are expanding and they're pushing against a wall on both sides and it's actually lifting the planks up. But uh, in this case, it's actually because there is timber floor that is actually buckling underneath and it's creating high and low spots. And when people are walking down this passage, obviously some planks are supported, other planks are not, and that's where you get the breakout. Here is a trim that I've already picked up before when I did my initial inspection. And I just really wanted to show you this, which just totally gives you an insight into what's happening here. First of all, this trim should never be glued down with so much silicone. Obviously you can see this trim has a base, base track system or a screw system where it could be perfectly fitted if the installer just took a little bit of time and it would have been so easy into a timber floor as well. Um, this is just someone being lazy. Um, this totally locks down the floor. Um, this kind of system I would not support in any way or form. But what I'm actually seeing down below here is that I can see the timber floor. This is a strip timber floor, but it is absolutely sopping. Um, it is really, <laughs> you can smell it, you can see it. There is a total excess amount of water that's actually coming through over here. Um, this is just the start. It's going to get a whole lot worse, people. So this is the plank that I pulled up yesterday when I did my initial site inspection. This was covered in um, water and basically here you have the wooden floor below showing gross amount of swelling and mold. This is dangerous, all right? This is dangerous from a health perspective. You can see how you have the, the undulations of the, the timber as it's growing, trying to expand. I'm going to pull up the next plank for you to have a look at. But um, this first plank I pulled up yesterday. So let's have a look and see what we see here. Right. You can see it's wet, it's mold, you've got undulation, you've got it's peaking. There's all sorts of things growing here. Oh, look at that. Look at that water. This is a health hazard. Now what has happened here is that the microclimate below the solid timber floor has been compromised. This wooden floor was perfectly stable before it was covered up. But because the timber floor cannot breathe through the stone plastic composite, or if it was a laminate, or if it was a vinyl going over the top, because it can't, it can't breathe, now all that moisture in that microclimate below has got nowhere to go and it causes the timber to rot out. I'd hate to see the condition below this floor because that's going to be even worse. Soft. This floor needs to be replaced and potentially the floor joists there under. You can also see that there is absolutely no sign of a moisture barrier here whatsoever. If the installer thought that a lack of a moisture barrier would save the wooden flooring there under, they were sorely mistaken. Finally, in closing, don't be afraid of product and getting a great price for the product. 
you know, that's one thing and you know, people are going to be competitive in the marketplace. But one thing that you should not do is compromise on the installer. These floors require understanding and patience and attention to detail to safeguard that investment. The installer is the most critical component of your entire investment because they can take a cost-effective product and they can give you a fantastic result. So while choosing the product is important, pay attention to the installer. If you found this video informative, please hit us up, follow hashtag Plank Squad, Flooring Africa. We need your help to save more floors.